better run, man. Life's a pain, but you got me. Yeah, life's a pain, but I got you. Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to talk about two issues of Cult of Carnage Misery, issues two and three. I was, you know, just decided to wait because after two came out, there was kind of a little bit of a gap uh, between one and two. So I was like, I'll wait till three comes out. And then three came out pretty quickly. So I was like, all right, good. I got both of these. I'll just wait and record them together. So that's what I'm doing today is I'm finally recording both of these. So that way we can discuss them and we will get into some spoilers. So if you haven't read these yet, you know, I encourage you to go buy them yourself and then come back here afterwards and join the discussion with us down in the comment section and then hear my thoughts and, you know, give me yours down below as well. So we are going to get into some spoilers here uh, and I'm going to show off some of the artwork, which is really nice. The artwork is really good in this. Sabir Posada is the uh, the writer of this book and Francisco uh, Mortarino is the artist. And then I think Oren Jr. does some of the finishes of the artwork in the next issue. And they're really good. There's like some Spider-Man stuff in there and everything. So we're going to get into that. Uh, but this is neat because as we've discussed throughout, you know, the Carnage books and, you know, leading into Venomverse and all that is that there's many different Carnage slivers out there. You know, Normie has one um, with his Red Goblin storyline. And then there's, you know, Deadpool has some, you know, arms growing out of his back that are Carnage related. Um, then we have, you know, the Cosmic Carnage that's going through the multiverse, killing all the Venoms. And then we have the Cletus Cassidy that thinks he's a Cletus Cassidy down on Earth that was just defeated during Carnage Reigns. So there's like all these different versions of Carnage. And this is another one. Liz Allen is bonded to a sliver of the Carnage symbiote and a sliver of the Anti-Venom symbiote also. that The Alchemex made one, not the original one, I don't believe. So, uh, so this is really cool because, again, we get flashbacks of Liz's life with Harry and kind of some of the conversations they had off panel that we never seen before that kind of adds to their history and their lore together and I love this it's cool to see Harry again I really liked the Nick Spencer stuff even though I had some ups and downs during the Nick Spencer Spider-Man run all the Harry stuff that was put in there was really good even though it turned out to not really be Harry and that's some of the things Liz is dealing with so I got to give Sabir you know and the editors and everyone on this book a lot of credit for tapping into that and being like you know she was in love with someone and it wasn't like full Harry so what, so what do we do? How does someone deal with that? How do they grieve um, knowing that, you know, Harry died once and then the, the man she knew wasn't like a full Harry Osborn and is dead again, you know, or died again in her arms. So like, what what does that do? And, and, I, and I think that's the story. I think that was the thing where it was like two, like Harry, the one on earth wasn't like a full Harry or something. Um, I don't know. It gets complicated with Spider-Man because of the Mephisto deal and all that stuff. So you never really know. But she watched Harry die and she's grieving it. And she's also trying to deal with which memories and moments of their history should feel more real than the others, I guess. So that's kind of, I don't know. That's maybe I'm projecting a little bit on there. That's what it felt like. You know, some of these scenes throughout these three books of her flashbacks, some of them are her struggling remembering that version of Harry. And some of her are like, no, this is the Harry when I was pregnant. And I, I, I have very fond memories of this conversation. So I like that about her, but at the end of the last issue, you had this guy Corwin Jones uh, show up and kind of cut her down, uh, you know, almost kill Liz Allen. And so what Dr. Steven does is he bonds her or helps her bond with the symbiotes of Carnage and Anti-Venom, which were not taken by Corwin. So Corwin actually came in uh, with his gear, you know, his helmet and all that stuff, the X on his chest. And he came in and he took down the lab and captured the Life Foundation symbiotes under orders of Carlton Drake from the Life Foundation who has been magically resurrected by Meridius. So I like that this book is dealing with Carlton Drake since the main Venom book hasn't really been so much since they brought him back. So uh, it's cool to see that, you know, he wasn't forgotten. Um, so yeah, so there's cool artwork in this. Like I said, this um, lab uh, experiment monkey shows up and, you know, starts to fight Liz and, and develops a, has like a speaking box and it starts telling her like, you know, you guys operated on me. I hate you. You know, all these things, you know, took me from my habitat and my family and, and here I am getting poked and prodded with needles and now bonded to this alien. And I like it because it opens Liz up to going, you know what, we, you know, s set all the other animals free. This, you know, creature is not wrong. Let's keep it here. We'll recapture it and we'll try to separate the symbiote from it, uh, you know, from, from the monkey. And in the meantime, um, set all the other animals free, send them back to their natural habitats if possible, um, spend whatever it costs to do so. So kind of neat, you know, like Liz showing that she does have a heart. She is a very cool character. I like Liz Allen. She goes way back in Spider-Man lore and history. She goes all the way back to the beginning. And so th seeing them do something with her is neat. I, I'm not a big fan of 
symbiotes just being put on every character. Like we're going to get Black Widow. We're going to talk about that soon too. I don't really like that just being the thing in the Venom books. We, When I started this channel, I was like, you know what it seems like? It seems like there's two types of Venom stories. There's there's this type and then there's the type that like where everyone gets a symbiote. And that's all I feel like we've been in since, you know, Donny Cates' run. It's just everybody gets a symbiote and that's where we're progressing and moving. And I don't know. I, I don't really... I don't see that a lot of creativity there. Um, and, uh, but you know, here we are. So I say, I oh, will say for the concept though, they're doing a pretty good job considering I'm kind of anti again, you know, I'm kind of against this kind of sto story setup where everyone just gets symbiote. They're trying at least, and they're, and they're doing a pretty decent job. And it's, it's cool to see a story focusing on Liz Allen. And if it takes bonding her to a symbiote to get a, a decent Liz Allen story, then I guess those are the, you know, the cards that were, are being played and, I can accept that for sure. So she is going out looking for Corwin and coming across his robot toys, kind of like the toy man from Superman. He's got all these like little robot dolls that are, you know, explode. So she's dealing with that while Carlton Drake has built a new suit for Corwin where all the symbiotes he captured are going to pump through it and funnel them into a, a single host and turn that host into, you know, uh, something insane, <laughs> basically. And we'll get to that. Um, so then we have this moment with uh, Liz where she's going and talking to the gentleman that she met in the first issue. And you find out that they had a thing together, um, that they have a past and that, uh, you know, he understands that she's dealing with loss and grief, but he's hoping that maybe this could and at the end of her grief, you know, if she ever comes out of it, which, you know, for anyone who knows who's been through grief, it kind of, you kind of just find a way to factor it in. You don't really get rid of it. it. It's always there every day, even years and decades later. Um, but, uh, but this guy's like, you know, maybe we can still have a chance one day, you know, I really love you. And she kind of is like, yeah, no, she kind of gives him a line. And she even hates herself for saying that line later because she's like, he is a nice guy, you know, I, you know, but I don't want to feel like I'm using him to feel like I'm using him for information. And I also am not in a good place right now to be with someone so I should have just been honest instead of giving them some like dumb line. So I, I kind of do like moments like that, uh, you know, that they put in here again, Liz is a neat character. And I think Sabir writes a good Liz Allen, um, the symbiote stuff and kind of her powers are all over the place. She can, you know, she swings through the air and then she can crash into a water tower and completely explode into blood and guts and then pull herself back together. So I always dislike stories like that, where, you know, if you do it for a villain, that's one thing. Cause you're like, okay, how are they going to stop this villain? Um, like Hydro Man or Sandman or, you know, even Carnage, you know, how, if they're liquid state, how are you going to stop them? You know, it, it puts a lot of pressure on. But when you have a hero that does it, you're kind of like, all right, that's a little OP in my opinion. But maybe Liz isn't a hero. We don't know yet, right? She has some of Carnage in her. So we don't know really where she's going to land. We just know that right now she's trying to get those symbiotes back because she knows Carlton Drake having them, you know, puts those symbiotes in, you know, they're going to get used for something way more nefarious and what the Alchemex company was going to use them for, or at least, at least so she thinks, because obviously we know the future of Alchemex, so, you know, they're going to end up being pretty bad, actually. Uh, so, yeah, so she tracks down Corwin, finally goes in to fight him, and then when she gets there, uh, he surprises her. You know, she goes in and she's like, I'm just going to talk to you. And he's like, really? You thought you were going to talk to me? He's like, you have a symbiote. And he's like, you have the two symbiotes I didn't capture. He's like, I know, I put a camera in your office um, before I smashed the place up. And, uh, and I saw you pull yourself back together. He goes, so I got a symbiote of my own. So it turns out he's wearing that suit, you know, in a way or a version of it, uh, what Carlton Drake was putting together where he has all the life foundation symbiotes and toxins. So he has riot on there, agony, phage, um, or phage, lasher, uh, scream and toxin. And again, I don't remember how scream can still be here. I think she was separated during extreme carnage. And then they made silence from the separation version. I can't remember the full details. Maybe one of you guys can. So, but I was like, oh, right, Scream. She was in issue one and I thought she was dead. I thought the symbiote turned into silence, but I guess a sliver of her lived. So here she is on madness here. So that's where the, this issue ends. Um, and these, I don't have any digital codes for. This is one of those things where you have to, you know, email uh, Marvel and stuff and, and, and wait for a response. So since I don't have a digital code for these two issues, boom, there's a digital code for a different book. So first, you know, first person to go in to that website, put that code in, you'll get that comic book. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on that book. Uh, let me know down below or go find the episode where we discuss that book and you can leave your comment review there if you'd like. Um, but I wanted to give something out in these episodes. <laughs> so that's it. I think that's all I have of digital codes. 
So I'll try to gather some more for, you know, future episodes later on. So, uh, yeah, so now we have issue three, and this is just came out. This is, again, by Sabir Pizzada. Francesco Martorini does the artwork, but Oren Jr. comes in and does some of the finishes, and we get some beautiful pages here with Spider-Man on them. So now Spider-Man has been hired by Norman Osborn to look into the disappearance of Liz because I'm assuming Norman is dealing with, uh, you know, Normie at this point. He just found out that Normie is the Red Goblin. And so Norman's like, I can't, you know, separate time from this because I need to, you know, focus on Normie and find Normie. Um, so that's what he's working on, I, I'm presuming, uh, based on, you know, when these books are coming out. So Spidey's like, okay, well, you know, I don't got anything going on because my monthly book sucks big time. So yeah, I'll absolutely come into this mini series and look for someone. So, uh, so yeah, so he's in here looking for Liz Allen and while Liz Allen is, you know, fighting madness. And so the most of this book is them fighting. So there's a lot of action in this story, uh, a lot of action and, uh, not a lot of like advancing the plot, but there's, there's, there's moments. I do like all the involvement of Spidey in this. Um, he's really great in this. His humor is really great. Sabir does a good job writing Spidey, so I wouldn't mind seeing Sabir do more with Spidey again, maybe through this miniseries, sure, but through, a, you know, their, his own miniseries, Sabir's own miniseries, that would be great. Um, but look at this artwork. I just, it's awesome. I think it's a lot of fun, even though that's the goofiest looking hybrid monster ever. <laughs> you know, you know me, I like the multiple heads from Venom to Madness. So this being called Madness and having multiple heads, I'm like, okay, you know, kind of not so subtle reference, but I dig it. it it's cool. But this is where I get, you know, annoyed about, you know, these moments is when a character can completely be dismembered, their head dismembered, their head frozen, and then yet still find a way to come back together. It's like, oh my goodness. So they put her in a tank, bring her to Carlton Drake, and uh, they try to reason with her and they want to get the symbiotes off her so Carlton can finish whatever the heck he's working on. And meanwhile, Spider-Man has now tracked her down. And is finding out what building she's in. And uh, and also over at Alchemex, Dr. Steven is talking to the monkey who's like, hey, look, I am kind of connected to her. I can help you find her too, but you got to let me go. And if you do it, you know, I'll, I'll leave you alone. I won't try to kill you. I won't do anything like that. So Dr. Steve is stuck, you know, should I make this deal with this monkey experiment of ours? And if so, are we going to get another, <laughs> you know, Carnage character out there who has like a spiral on their chest and everything? Um, so yeah, this... Uh, this orangutan or whatever it is, is like like making a deal with Dr. Steven. Uh, but then also Spearhead. Spearhead is out there looking for, uh, you know, Liz as well. So uh, so there's a lot of players, you know, going uh, at play here. Uh, a lot of pieces, uh, you know, going on. But um, it's handled well. Like, I don't feel like, whereas I talked about David Michelini's miniseries of Venom, the previous one felt bloated. This one feels more, you know, kind of like paced like the, the new Michelini one where it's more focused. And there are a lot of characters everywhere, but they each get their moment to, you know, have their presence and have their, you know, time to shine in the script. So you get this cool kind of moment where Spearhead is fighting these droids that were sent by Norman Osborn and Spider-Man. But obviously Spider-Man captures Spearhead and is like, look, I know you're looking for Liz Allen. I am too. I was trying to, you know, come at you friendly, but uh, but I figured you wouldn't, you know, respond well to friendly. So I brought all these, uh, you know, Oscorp tech with me. And, they, and we captured you. So yeah, let's go find Liz Allen. So cool moment there with Spidey um, and Spearhead. And then also, this is where the story, though, kind of gets a little, eh, kind of starts losing me, where, you know, Corwin, they reveal that he's dying. You know, they reveal that Liz knew it. She found that out in the last episode or last issue. And so he's dying, and he's he's trying to leave something behind, you know, as, as some kind of revenge or something. He just wants to know the world won't be left better, I guess. I don't know. He's, he's got weird motivations, so what he does is he now has brought all the symbiotes, you know, to Carlton Drake and Carlton Drake, as they're still working on Liz and separating those symbiotes from her, they transfer his symbiotes, the madness, into these six soldiers. Um, and so they're the symbiotechs. And I already don't like this idea. Uh, I hope they're just fodder and they die really quickly in the next episode or next issue because... Um, it's just one of those ideas like where they when they did that in Carnage USA, where it had like the Life Foundation symbiotes on different soldiers. And it was like, OK, we got the sniper. We got this. We got that. And they were attacked with a unit. That was kind of neat. But this feels like a retread of that, but like a little bit of a lazier retread. If they would have done something like that, I would have been like, OK, I got, we've seen it before, but it's kind of cool. You know, that's, that's kind of cool. They're bringing that back. But this doesn't feel like that. This feels more a little bit more lazy. 
So we'll see in the next issue, you know, and I'll do four and five together. I'll wait till five comes out and we'll talk about four and five together and we'll see how the story wraps up. But right now, the only thing that I'm kind of intrigued by in this issue is, is who this is. Um, they have this other woman running around, you know, breaking into this lab and coming in to break Liz Allen out. And they kind of keep her, you know, identity a mystery. And I don't know if it's another Liz Allen, like if it's, you know, like a clone or a life model decoy. Um, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, Yelena, you know, whatever, you know, it's the Black Widow. Like, I don't, I don't know how this all ties in, who she is. She clearly has some connection somehow to Liz and Harry's past, probably. Um, they do reveal there were secret phone calls being made. It looks like it was Norman, though, that was doing that, keeping tabs on on uh, Liz. But whoever this woman is, uh, she may not be connected to that. So I'm curious to see the reveal of that character and how they stick the landing. So when they do issues four and five, like I said, I'll wait till the fifth issue comes out and then we'll come back here and we'll discuss them both on this channel. And I'll love to hear your thoughts, uh, you know, at that point on the landing of this series. But for this part, for the middle chunk, you know, the second act, I want to hear your thoughts down below. You know, overall, I thought it was OK. You know, it's like it's it's a, the second issue that was good. The third issue had moments where it was starting to lose me. But uh, but I'm hoping that's just because they're gearing up for, you know, just total chaos in the next two issues. Um, I don't find Corwin that interesting of a villain. The madness thing, I don't find that interesting of a concept, really. Uh, the symbiotex, I like even less. So sometimes your stories are only as good as your villains. So that's why I'm glad Carlton Drake is here. And I'm hoping they do more with that. Um, so again, time will tell what the ending of this will be. But for now, I would say... I'm probably floating around the three out of five range of as far as rating the series overall based on the first three issues. I like it. I definitely don't hate it. Um, I'm critical of it, but I also see the point of some of the choices being made in this. But I think the art's fantastic too. So like the David McLean stuff, the art is carrying me a little bit through this storyline. Um, but I do think Sabir writing certain characters like Liz and Spider-Man's humor, that stuff I like. Uh, even Carlton Drake stuff I like, but I didn't really like you know, Corwin, I don't really like Spearhead too much. Like some of these other characters, I'm not a big fan of. But it is cool to see the Alchemex characters. That was one of my favorite things from the Costa run was Dr. Steven and, and Liz and everything and, and them having a role in the Venom, you know, sphere. And so seeing that on page is awesome. And seeing these flashbacks of Harry with Liz is really awesome too. And I think those scenes are well written as well. So for me, those are the, the you know highlights. And then there's some good action, but some of the villains aren't, good and you know i don't feel are strong enough to kind of carry me into a point where i'm caring and i also don't like that liz can just be ripped into a hundred pieces and then put back together when they did that we started doing that with wolverine i you know where you can drop nukes on him and he can rebuild from a skeleton i you know it's one of those where i'm like ah oh, come on man this is a little i know it's comics but so it feels like a little too far sometimes so those are my thoughts what are yours let me know down below and we'll keep talking as always down there thanks so much for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace Thank you.